Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be doing the 2024 Senate map for the month of June, and I changed a bit of my ratings around a bit, because uh, I just analyzed the races again and uh, looked at the incumbents. Okay, we're going to start off with the... Let's do the safe Republican seats. I think that'll be a better way to start off with. Utah is just not going to be competitive. Wyoming, the two Nebraska Senate seats are definitely not going to be competitive. North Dakota... Mississippi, Tennessee, Indiana. Okay, those are the super safe Republican seats. Let's go with the super safe Democratic ones. So Hawaii, California, Washington. The Northeast mainly is just extremely safe. And I think that's all the super safe Democratic seats. Okay, now we're going to be talking about the... Uh, I wouldn't say super safe. I would put them as like pretty solidly decided on either side like it's a 99 percent chance that that person's going to win and uh we'll start off with the blue areas so Maine angus king he's going to announce he's going to be running i mean there's been a leak that his staffers already released like a picture of like uh angus king 2024 image on one of their websites so that's already indicating he is running for re-election that uh that independent uh, senator who caucuses with the Democrats. Okay, Minnesota, it's the next one of my ranking. Amy Klobuchar is a very strong incumbent. She'll probably win by like 16 points in Minnesota. I just don't think the Republicans have a good bench in Minnesota at all. In Virginia with Tim Kaine, I think it's just going to be a safe seat. I think Tim Kaine's going to win by like around 11 or 12 points. I think he's going to outperform Biden by a bit. Plus, I don't really think anyone strong on the Republican side is going to run against Tim Kaine. Glenn Youngkin's going to stay governor. He's the only one who could make this race even competitive and shift it to lean. But he's not going to run. And uh, I don't think they're going to have any good Republicans either in Virginia. So it's pretty much a lock for the Democrats. New Mexico also, Martin uh, Heinrich, he's running for re-election. He's probably easily going to win re-election there. So I'm just going to put as safe Democratic. Okay, now for some safe Republican seats. Missouri, it could be competitive, but it's not going to be likely. It's just going to be probably like a 12-point victory for uh, Josh Hawley. Lucas Kuntz probably will perform decent, better than the average Democrat, but he'll still lose by around 12. Manchin also, I think, is going to lose by around 12 points, because it looks like Jim Justice is going to be the Republican nominee. He's in the lead in the Republican primary in West Virginia by a lot. However, if Mooney is the Republican nominee, I would shift this to lean Republican. Just based on the polling there, Manchin does a lot better against Mooney than Justice. Justice right now is beating Manchin by 20 in the polls. But I think Manchin will get a little bit more than a 20% defeat. I think it'll be a 12% defeat for him. Okay, the next few states. I think we'll start off with Pennsylvania. This is the closest to being safe. The reason I'm putting as likely is... Uh, Mastriano has announced he's not running for the Senate seat. Plus, now we have McCormick announcing he's running. And that's probably good for Republicans. They don't have to put a lot of funds into Pennsylvania because McCormick can self-fund the race, but he's still going to lose by like eight points to Bob Casey. It really doesn't have that much of a shot here against him. The next state that's pretty close to likely, I would say, is Michigan. Slotkin's a, a very strong Democrat. She could win by a likely margin, but I'm going to put her as a 4% win in the state of Michigan. Wisconsin, again, this is a potential Republican flip, but even Mitch McConnell's not too hopeful about this seat. I think that Tammy Baldwin, even though her approval rating looks low, I think it's a lot higher than it's suggesting. I think she's going to be fine. I Wisconsin rarely votes out their incumbent senator. Even with Ron Johnson, who's super unpopular, he still managed to win. So I think those polls are underrating Tammy Baldwin's strength here. Plus, she's pretty populist as a politician, so I think she'll be able to win in Wisconsin. Probably outperforms Biden here. The next few seats. I think we should hit Florida and Texas. So Florida, I'm shifting from likely Republican to lean. I think Rick Scott's going to underperform the top of the ticket. Right now, I'm assuming Trump's the nominee, and I assume Trump's probably going to win Florida by six. I think Rick Scott only wins Florida by four. I think there'll be that much a, of an underperformance, because Rick Scott's always in a close election. He's just a very unlikable figure, but he pours all his money 
into politics and he tries to outbuy his Democratic opponent, which will probably happen this time, but he's pretty unpopular. You look at his approval rating, it's not that good. But uh, again, the top of the ticket, even though he'll underperform Trump by two points, it'll bring him to a four point win in Florida. In Texas, I think Ted Cruz is only going to win by two points. I think he underperforms Trump that much. He underperforms him by around 2%, I would say, similar to Florida. Again, Ted Cruz doesn't have the best approval rating. He's always underwater in his uh, approval ratings. Plus, Colin Elred, he's actually a very uh, strong recruit that the Democrats got here for the Senate race. I think he could definitely get a lot of turnout in the urban areas in Texas and make it very competitive. And honestly, this is one of the races that I think Democrats should totally invest in. I think it's totally winnable, especially if Trump only wins Texas by like two points. But right now I think he wins by about four. But if Trump only wins Texas by two, they could flip the Texas Senate race because Ted Cruz is totally going to underperform Trump in the Senate race. I really think he would just because of the approval rating issue he has. So lean Republican for now. And now we're down to the most competitive Senate races, I would say, these batch of four. We'll start off with Nevada and Arizona first. Nevada, I think, is probably going to go to the Democrats. Again, Democratic turnout's going to be much higher in the presidential election year, even though turnout was a lot higher for Republicans in 2022 in Nevada. They didn't even manage to win the Nevada Senate race with like a 10% turnout advantage or more. So they weren't even able to win in a very Republican electorate. So again, I just don't think they have a shot there. And in Arizona, even in a three-way race between Cinema, Gallego, and Lake, Gallego still wins in all the polling, pretty much. Maybe he's tied in one of those polls, but I just think Cinema voters are going to realize she's not going to win and they're probably going to shift to the Democrats. And honestly, she's taking away a few moderate Republican voters away from the Republican candidate that we see. So... It's almost about even, but I think she takes about a percent or two away from uh, Gallego in total, like a net, sort of like a, a net percentage away from I would say. But it would be better if she weren't wasn't going to run, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. So lean Democratic for now. I think Gallego is probably going to be the next senator from Arizona. Okay, now we're down to Ohio and Montana. We'll start off with Montana first. Tester has a very high approval rating. Some polls show it as high as 60%, and it looks like the nominees are either going to be uh, Ryan Zink or Matt Rosendale. And if it's Matt Rosendale again, I think Tester could totally beat him in a rematch, but this is going to be a state that Trump's probably going to win by like 14 to 15 points, so Tester has to hope for a lot of ticket splitters, but again, it's a lot smaller of a population, so those getting like 50,000 ticket splitters in the state of Montana is quite doable for Tester, considering that high approval rating and Rosendale losing before in Montana. I really think Tester is a slight favorite in this race right now, like a 55% chance that Tester wins in Montana. I think he wins by like 0.8% or something like that. Again, it's a very Republican state, but I think you could pull it off. And then Ohio. Again, it's a lot harder for Sherrod Brown because he has to hope for like 250,000 ticket splitters instead of Tester just hoping for 50,000. There's this a numerical disadvantage for Sherrod Brown compared to uh, Tester in Montana. And again, Ohio has shown before that they like ticket splitting, but I think Trump or the Republican nominee is probably going to win Ohio by about seven or eight points. And again, I think that would put Sherrod Brown in the danger zone. I think he would narrowly lose if that happens. Just due to the uh, amount of voters he needs to vote for him that are Republican, it's going to be a pretty tough road to manage. But I still think he loses by a tilt Republican margin. Probably like mm, it's almost a point, I would say. 0.9%, I would say. Could even be lean or honestly in Ohio. But uh, we haven't even seen any polls in Ohio yet, which I don't even know why they're not polling the Senate race. They really should, because I want to see where Sherrod Brown actually stands. They did polls in Montana. That's an important one. Why can't they do them in Ohio? But uh, that is my 2024 Senate map prediction for the month of June, and I'll see you guys in the next video.